So we're continuing the discussion of the nature of plane waves, EM plane waves in a vacuum. And we've already discovered uh, these two rules from, from the first two rules of Maxwell's laws. Uh, that, uh, and this is B. B vector, and my handwriting is just terrible, and I apologize for that. <coughs> Namely, that the E field and the B field cannot have any X, cannot have any X dependency. So I, or, I can't point in the X direction. It has to be constrained to the Y Z plane. Um, so that's the first thing we discovered. The next thing we discovered, the next two laws, Faraday's and Ampere's, describe how the time dependence of the E field is related to the curl of the B field, and so on. So for Faraday's law. Let's walk through this. We have, um, excuse me, um, so the curl of the E field has to be equal to the negative the time derivative of the B field, right? So uh, let's do. Let's take the. Let's take the time derivative of b first. So that is going to be equal to minus d by dt of our b naught vector complex times e to the i kappa x minus omega t. Okay. And um, if we take the time derivative of that, what that does is it brings down the negative omega. Um, this comes down to that. So the negatives cancel. We have omega b naught vector complex e to the i kappa x minus omega t. Okay, so that's the time derivative of the b field. Let's draw that out. Okay, uh, the curl of e, um, and it's. I think it's probably been a little bit of time since you've last examined a curl, so I'm just gonna draw this out in its full glory. So this is uh, the determinant where you have i hat, j hat, and k hat on the top. You have d by dx, d by dy, d by dz, and then you have the x, y, and z components. Well, um, so we learned that the x component of the E field is always zero. And then we have our EY, and it's gonna be complex. And we have our EZ, and it's gonna be complex as well. So taking the, the determinant of this, so it's i d by dy of e, ez, d by dz of ey, and so on. Um, so let's calculate what um, the, the only, so d by dy or d by dz is always going to give you zero because there's only an x and a t in our e field, right? So there's no i component, so there's zero i because this is zero and this is zero. Then we have for the j, we have uh, d by dz of zero minus um, d by dx of the, of the, so we have d by dx of the z component of the field. Okay, and then we have our k, this is the j hat direction. And then for k we have the derivative with respect to x of the y component um, and zero. So we have d by dx um, and it's my hand in the way, I hope it's not. E y vector in the k hat direction. Okay, so um, taking the derivative with respect to x of our fields is rather easy once again. So um, our fields are just something e to the i k x. So we're going to bring down an i, we're going to bring down a k. Where did my i go here by the way? I feel bad, I should feel bad. Um, there's an I. I. Okay. There's an I down there. Okay. So, so we're going to bring down an I. We're going to bring down a kappa. So this is going to be equal to um, minus kappa I times the same field uh, in the J hat direction plus uh, uh, kappa I of the same field in the k hat direction. Okay? And um, so 
The interesting thing to remember is that both the B field and the E field have this E to the minus KX minus omega T. So this has to equal um, omega I B naught vector, right? And then that's E to the I I kappa X minus omega T. And these things, this is basically the Z, the Z component of E naught times e to the i k x minus omega t. This is e, e, the e naught y component times, you know, k x minus omega t, e to the i k x minus omega t. So, <coughs> excuse me for a second. Back to my notes to make sure everything looks nice and pretty. We have, oh, everything has a factor of i, so we can cancel out our i's. That's always nice to get rid of i. I always feel troubled when I see the i's. Um, we have two components. So we have minus kappa E Z. Uh, this is actually E naught Z because I'm getting rid of the E to the minus KX minus omega T. E to the I KX minus omega T. The J component is equal to omega B naught in the J direction. That's the Y direction. These are complex, not vectors. And on the other hand, we have kappa E in the Y direction e naught in the y direction has to equal omega b naught in the z direction. Because this is the k component that has to equal the b field there. So we have these two rules. Um, let me circle these for you. Um, if if you're really talented and, and you have that thinking, you should see something having to do with cross here. And in fact, you can simplify all of this by saying that B, the B naught vector complex, is equal to 1 over C um, I hat cross the E naught vector. Okay? And this 1 over C came from just, you know, taking kappa, dividing it by omega. That gives you 1 over C. Um, so this is this basically says that the B naught the B naught the B field is e to the i kappa x minus omega t times this factor, and the E field is e to the i k x minus omega t times this thing, and it says that those two things are directly related to each other in this way. Okay, it especially says that these two these two constants are in the same phase. When B is at its maximum, E is at its maximum. So there's no delta uh, difference between the E and the B fields. Uh, the E field, if it has a delta, then the B field must have the same delta uh, is another way of looking at that. Okay, um, I'm going to take a break here. It's been eight minutes, uh, and then we're going to look at example three next. Thanks for following along, and, and be sure to, to ask any questions in the comments or or a video response. Thanks for your time. Bye.